you, you have a big, big formula for more selling. Again, the market, and as we all know this, the market could turn around at any given point, but that's kind of at least what the narrative has been uh, the first week or so. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody has a good start uh, to their weekend. And uh, welcome to 2022. So the first uh, week of 2002 um, is in the books, right? Is in the books, uh, hopefully. Uh, some of you guys kicked off the year uh, on a very, very good note. Again, that covers every aspect of your life, health, monetary, and just pure happiness. Uh, if you're having a rough start to the year, just remember, it's a year, right? It's a year. It's a week. It's a long journey in your in your life. And, and I, I've been kind of reiterating this point uh, many, many times. Nothing is going to define you. Not any individual event, not individual trade is ever going to define you. Your relationships... Uh, the love that you have for your family and friends, that's the ultimate uh, testing ground of how successful uh, your life is. And trading is exactly the same way. And we've been saying this for years. There, you know, there is no, uh, you know, there is no magical uh, number, okay, that, you know, how many weeks, how many years that you're trading that it's finally going to all click in uh, and you're just going to wake up one day and go, ah, I got it, right? There is no, everybody uh, matures differently. Uh, everybody is going to have a completely different journey uh, a completely different story to tell uh, as they develop. And when you're looking back at your early part of your career, 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the line, uh, you're gonna really appreciate the journey. You know, some people hit the ground running very, very quickly, start, you know, start really having a pretty good career first two, three years. Uh, others takes a long, long time. And, and again, I keep on reiterating the point, uh, don't put pressure. There Again, there, there is no set timeline. Don't put pressure on yourself uh, as long as you continue to practice the proper way of putting in the research, um, putting in the really good habits, not being affected by opinion, sticking to technical analysis, eventually it's all going to make sense, right? Eventually it's going to all sink into your uh, subconscious and then you start your career and eventually you'll have that aha moment at three o'clock in the morning uh, of all the little tidbits and nuances and all the different things you went through and picked up along the way and it's finally going to make sense and that's when this business starts to be uh, pretty cool but the most important part don't put a lot of pressure on yourself um, you know everybody is going to have uh, like I said a different story to tell your story should be individual time is is on your side and the most important part is you're going to develop when it's your time so uh you know be very you know be very very uh be very aware of that uh you know continue to believe in god that uh, he or she will uh put you in the right direction and just continue uh to believe in yourself so let's talk about the market so uh first weeks in the books um what really stood out this week was the nasdaq names four and a half percent decline um Going into uh, the final week, uh, again, you hear a lot of uh, traders uh, talk about this. Well, the first week, you know, the last you know couple of weeks of the fourth quarter are super bullish, usually generally, right? Uh, first couple of weeks during uh, the first quarter of January are very bullish, sort of generally, right? There's nothing set in stone. Uh, but just keep keep this remember you know keep this in the back of your mind. Nothing ha has to happen, right? The the market uh, that I knew 20 years ago was different than the market I knew 10 years ago. The market that I knew 10 years ago was completely different uh, where it is not. And now you have more uh, opportunities of disconnect in the market than uh, uniform moves all across all the indexes. So if I give you a perfect example, the Dow was pretty much flat on the week, and you know led by uh, names, uh, you know led by names for example like Boeing. Uh, and names, for example, like Caterpillar that we covered uh, in the last weekend update, uh, Deer, right? These these names are, are very very strong. Uh, the the oil names, if you look at the OIHs, the oil names, they you know they kind of carry the Dow to kind of a flat uh, flat scenario for the week. But when you look at the speculation money, right? When you look at the names uh, that are associated with growth, they painted a different picture. And when you look at the Nasdaq. 
uh, composite, and we'll talk about the NASDAQ 100 right now, it's a completely different story. You know, 4.5% decline. Uh, there was an obvious, uh, obvious um, strike, right? There was an obvious buyer strike. Uh, the growth names continue to be sold, but it's not even uh, the new growth names that, you know, that everybody uh, in 2021 uh, was so in love with, with the firms of the world and the UPSTs of the world and the letter U's of the world and even a name uh, like NET. I mean, look at the destruction here. You're talking about a stock that got cut in half uh, from November 18th. This isn't like going back two years. This has got cut in half just in a couple of months. So the, the story is very aggressive to the downside. And when we started uh, the week and we talked about uh, we talked about the beginning of the week, we've been watching the videos all throughout the week. It's 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 been obvious sell bias because your favorite stocks, and, and again, it doesn't make a difference what your favorite stock is, it's being sold, right? Nothing is being um, nothing is being held back. Again, when you have a, a four and a half percent decline and then you have your Fed uh, in the middle of the week uh, talking about uh, now a March rate hike, uh, and you have the Treasuries. Uh, listen, you, you have a big, big formula for more selling. Again, the market, and as we all know this, the market could turn around at any given point, but that's kind of at least what the narrative has been uh, the first week or so. If you do trade Caterpillar, if you do trade Deer, uh, and uh, the Boeings of the world and oils, again, you, you're having a different conversation. Your, you know, your Saturday is completely different than the people who uh, are long Amazon, for the people who are long Tesla, maybe not long Tesla here or down there, but you know, somewhere here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, when you look at Microsoft, like look at the decline Microsoft has had. This isn't a growth story that is sitting there with uh, you know five hundred thousand dollars in the bank, right? This is Microsoft. I mean, look at the decline. Microsoft has gone from three forty one to three ten in a matter of a week and a half. That's a pretty big move. And then when you start looking at names uh, that had big big growth stories years ago, you know they are underneath the two hundred moving moving average. So. Technology has a big problem on its hands, and not every stock has broken down already. There's a lot of names that are still holding up, but not holding up to the point of go higher. They're holding it up until the next wave of sellers come in. So for example, like look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is sitting on the bottom of this whole channel here. It's been sitting there pretty, pretty aggressively, and they've been defending prices all the way if you go back to the November 4 lows, right? But look at the, the data that you know happened this week. And again, I understand that option flow is not 100% accurate. We know this. Like, for example, going back two weeks ago, if you guys remember, they were coming for uh, the 300, the 310s, the 315, the 320, the 325 calls. And we're talking about a stock right now in the 270s. But this week, if you believe in the theory that price action occurs during you know during um, a very aggressive deep out of the money call buying with short term expiration, well now they're coming for the other half of the equation, right? For this week, uh, we started seeing for the for the fourteenth expiration, which is Friday, uh, we started seeing two sixty five. We started seeing uh, two sixty put buyers pretty aggressively. Even the Teflon name. Uh, that rally and led that last you know month month and a half worth of upside Apple right and Apple this is you know it broke the bottom you know if you if you follow this whole uh, this whole uh, wedge here it finally broke below it and now put two days in a row underneath it and again if you believe in the theory stocks trade from supply to supply when that's the opposite stocks trade from uh, demand and all the way to demand so there's a lot of names that uh, either are on the chopping block or saw. Uh, very, very aggressive uh, selling uh, throughout the last couple of weeks. It's just not even the first week uh, of the market. It's been the last couple of weeks or so. So the whole narrative of you know the Santa Claus rally. See, the Santa Claus rally has been for the last five years. Don't let one or two weeks of sell bias kind of uh, trigger your idea that the market was around. The market's still you know very, very, uh, very, very strong from the macro point of view. If you stretch out the weekly charts. But from the day-to-day -day action, you could clearly see, like I said before, uh, there is a buyer strike, a notable buyer strike. Uh, even the names uh, that that had the biggest rallies throughout 2021 uh, are, are being sold. And when you go do your research today, you're not going to see a lot of technology names that are uh, appealing to the upside. Yeah, I mean, you'll have some names uh, that you'll turn around and say, I oh, you know what, this looks pretty good. 
but overall, you're not going to put yourself in a position, uh, at least at least I'm not, right? You're not going to put yourself in a position uh, going through the new week, falling in love with the idea that we could rally in technology. Is it possible? Of course, anything's possible, right? That's the whole point. Our job is just to prepare for the data. But yeah, I mean, come Monday morning, you know, the Dow could be up uh, 500 points, the Nasdaq could be up 300 points, and all of a sudden, bias changes like this, just the same way the bias went from, if you guys remember on uh, January the 3rd, right, the first day back, well, the first day of the year, uh, the bulls reclaimed the five-day moving average only to lose the 50-day moving average two days later. That usually doesn't happen. And if you look at the macro view right now on the NASDAQ 100, you could clearly see the bulls have some work to do, right? The bulls really have some work to do uh, to kind of reclaim back control. And, and if you look at this whole rising wedge, uh, the low here was the December 20th low of 377. And if you look at Friday's close, this is the second day in a row uh, that we closed below this daily supply. And now this 377 level right now on the queues is the only, you know, is the only thing standing away of having a really, you know, potentially another aggressive week of selling. So we have to be very, very conscious of this area. You can see here, 377 and a half uh, was the low on December the 20th. Friday's low was 378. So you can see how important this 377 level uh, is going to be uh, coming up into this week. But it's the individual plays that we have to make sure uh, that we are reading the market the right way. And obviously going into um, going into this new week, just based on data, just ba based on a lot of charts. And again, you can see your favorite charts, right? Amazon doesn't look good, right? Tesla that had a great, great run. Uh, you know, had a really, really, really great run. Um, you know, it survived Friday on this rising wedge, but look what happens. If, if, if Tesla does start confirming Friday's channels, I mean, look how much room you have down. So Tesla's gonna need to, you know, really reclaim this 1095, 1100 area on the close to kind of engulf the selling that we saw in the last, you know, three, four days uh, going into the first week uh, of the year. Uh, a name like NVIDIA, as we talked about here, this thing is literally one day away uh, coming below this whole channel here uh, to start a pretty aggressive decline back into, into a considering uh, more rising wedges. So it's very, very important. Uh, names like Docu, that I'm, I'm, which I'm very, very surprised they didn't take and retest the earnings lows uh, sooner. Uh, er, you know, it blew up on earnings and literally uh, since, let's see here, since December. So you're talking about a full month of distribution, but look what happens. And this has been one of my favorite plays. Uh, if you've been kind of watching uh, 2021 videos, you kind of know that uh, once a stock blows up on earnings and the first close below the earnings lows, that's kind of been kind of one of my favorite swing shorts for, for a while now because it's giving you two, three, four, five days in a row of just drifting action once it confirms uh, the bottom channel here. And you can see there's tons of examples of this uh, for 2021. So here is uh, Zillow, right? Blew up and for the next, you know, once it took out those lows, you know, went literally, you know, two weeks of selling. Uh, you look at names, for example, uh, like Wayfair uh, did exactly the same thing. Uh, FUBU, right? FUBU, FOBU, right? It blew up on earnings. It took out the lows, started coming in very, very aggressively. And there was just a lot of names, like a ton of names through 2021 that did exactly the same thing. So, you know, I'm watching Docu. It, again, maybe it doesn't, uh, maybe it doesn't do it uh, this week. Maybe it doesn't even do it at all. But if it starts, you know, if it starts confirming on the close, um, the earnings lows, it's going to, you know, it's going to trigger uh, an active swing. But there are some names uh, to the upside that look pretty good that have nothing to do with technology. Look at Ford. Again, Ford and General Motors, uh, although not sexy compared to like a Lucid, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, a Lucid or a Tesla, they're going to have a dominant, dominant presence in this whole EV market. And if you look at General Ford and General Motors, that's a really, really good run. So look at letter, you know, look at Ford, right? Look at Ford. Obviously, the value on Ford is any dip into the rising five-day support. Because you see the last time it dipped, right? You see this candle here? Last time it dipped into five-day support, it held it and started moving back up. If Monday it could get into five-day support, then keep an eye on this thing for a possible bounce. If not, watch the top of the channel here. Because again, if, if they start introducing more and more models, uh, blah, 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 you know, they are going to be 
uh, a pretty pretty solid player uh, in the EV game for uh, many years to come. Even a name like Amgen, again, you know, tech not included in this conversation. Amgen had a great, great run from uh, the November 30 lows, and now it's just kind of consolidating underneath the supply. If it starts taking out this whole channel here, again, this has nothing to do with Amazon. This thing has nothing to do with NVIDIA or Square, right? This is a biotech. So if this thing starts clearing out this whole channel, maybe this thing starts a multi-week run uh, back to the upside. You know, that looks pretty good. Lucid, right? Here's another name. Uh, Lucid had a you know nice little pop here on Friday. One of the very few names that actually stood out to the upside, but it stopped right at the 50-day moving average. If Lucid can start reclaiming back the 50-day moving average, we did see uh, short-term uh, 43, $44, $45 call buyers come in, and you can see here if it could just start reclaiming 40, if it could start reclaiming the 50-day moving average on the close, you got you got a lot of upside, right? It had, it had a really really strong run. Uh, towards uh, in, in uh, November of, of last year. It sounds uh, very, very uh, silly still to say. It's only been a couple of months, but you know you can see the November runs high. So maybe this thing could trigger uh, back to the upside. And one other name that I, I, I kind of like, look at this Holex, right? Look at this Holex, check this out. So it had this, and again, when I say like, not to the upside, um, it had this you know really, really ugly run, uh, really ugly move. Uh, going back to October, rallied a little bit, got rejected at the top of the supply. And look at the last two days, uh, look, at, look at last week, two monster, monster candles down. I want to see this thing kind of go sideways uh, for a, a couple of more days. But if this thing starts taking out the bottom channel here, uh, you got, you know, you got some pretty good, you got some good ping pong action happen, potential happening this thing uh, to going down to this range here. And if it obviously closes below this range here, then obviously you have a huge, huge potential uh, next leg down. So guys, remember, there's an old adage in trading. Uh, it's again, many of the wives tales, they say, they say, so go the first year, first week of the new year, so goes the market. Don't believe that, right? 2018, we had a horrific end uh, to uh, the fourth quarter, we had a horrific start to to the start of the first quarter in 2018. We had a really really aggressive uh, rally for the rest of the year. So four and a half percent on the Qs, not a small thing, right? But it's really not the end of the world. It's all about the individual plays. It's all about your individual approach, your individual process, and your in eventually your ability to stay in business. Guys, have a great great week. Have a great, great weekend. I wish you guys nothing but the best health and happiness. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.